Let's talk about poop, or specifically why you're not pooping. Now, if you guys don't know my personal story, a lot of why I got into traditional Chinese medicine and was going into the medical field anyway was really because of lifelong GI issues. And I'm embarrassed to say publicly on a camera, a lot of that was pooping and bowel issues. Let's talk about some of the most common reasons I see why people have bowel issues, as it's one of the most common reasons people come in to see me, as well as vitamins and nutrients that may be related, and of course, what is the traditional Chinese medicine point of view and herbal formulas that can help? Hi guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's jump in. Now, a lot of my personal story involves digestive issues. Now, GI issues run on my maternal side of the family. So my mother has some degree, my grandmother has some degree. A lot of people on my mother's side are just in general, constantly complaining about their digestion and digestive problems. Now for me, I seemed to be fine until my early 20s. But around my early 20s, I began to have lots of issues regarding bloating, what today would be diagnosed as SIBO, so bacterial overgrowth, just feeling so bloated that I was short of breath and couldn't even sleep. I was having such abdominal discomfort. After a while, I began having lots of alternating bowel patterns. So it could be a day, two, three, five days without a bowel movement. The absolute worst, and the most extreme was I had actually taken a trip to Philippines and Thailand with my girlfriend at the time. I must have been 20 or 21. And it was about seven or eight days without a bowel movement. And I was in such bad pain that we actually canceled one of our best trips we had planned, renting catamarans to go all throughout the islands and really have this very idyllic sort of vacation because I wasn't feeling well. Now, I know lots of people get traveler's constipation, but for me, this was a regular thing. And I ate perfectly well every single day. I was eating oatmeal in the morning. I was eating Mediterranean diet. I wasn't excessively consuming anything you shouldn't be eating. And this became a really big problem for me. And it really became quite a big pain point. It started off by me going to the GI specialist. And really the GI specialist was probably the least useful specialist I've ever seen, doing endoscopies and colonoscopies and telling you absolutely nothing about what's going on, especially functional issues like what I had. But in general, the main problems I was having were an IBS-like pattern, and I wouldn't go to the bathroom for two, three, four, five, six days, then I'd basically get diarrhea and abdominal cramping, and then I would feel better. I would get bloating all the time, even from healthy foods, and it was becoming a big issue for me. Around this time, I pivoted to see an acupuncturist, and the very first formula he put me on gave me the most normal and healthy digestive function of my entire life. Didn't cure me, but the very fact that there was a simple, low-cost herbal compound that's from 1500 years ago blew my mind because my GI specialist never told me anything about that. Now, a lot of what I was curious about was what was the origin of my problems? I didn't eat an unhealthy diet ever. I didn't have a high stress life. It made no sense to me. And I was curious about what was the root cause of my problems. Now, I've recently put together a free root cause quiz. It's like an eight or 10 page handout that we've put together on a little quiz you can score yourself on regarding where are your symptoms coming from, from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view. It's very unique and very interesting. So it's the link right below this video. I would highly recommend checking that out because it is honestly illuminating. And I think it's going to help you figure out a little bit more about where your health issues come from. Now, when we loop back around to getting to the root cause of, for example, constipation specifically, there are three common patterns that are diagnosed from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view based on the presentation. Pattern number one is what we call qi stagnation. Qi stagnation, you could just think of this as irregular or alternating bowel movements. Qi stagnation is sort of the pattern where either you have bowel movements every other day, very common in women, or for example, it can be quite severe. You're going two, three, four, five days, highly correlates with stress and anxiety or for women around their menstrual cycle. And qi stagnation, when you think of it, you could honestly just think of this as poop stagnation, right? We don't need to make it seem esoteric. Stagnation is sort of like someone who's traveling and because of the irregularity, their bowels are also irregular. So these people tend towards general irregularity or alternating stool patterns. The cause of this typically is stress and emotions or an irregular lifestyle overall. Second one is what we call due to heat or dryness. These are the kinds of people that have basically bowel movements every three, four, five, six, seven days. I mean, the worst I've ever seen is 20 days. That to me is baffling that those people exist and they aren't in the hospital. But these are people who generally have much more regular bowels once every three days or more. And this kind of heat in general, what I see is linked to a very poor diet. These are people who eat high carb diets, high sugar, high sodium, fried food, that kind of thing. Not a lot of consciousness necessarily around eating. And so the stools are very irregular and very, very dry and hard, very prone to hemorrhoids and that kind of thing. The main cause here in my experience typically is standard American diet, although not every cause, right? Medications can do that and medical conditions can do that. The third one is what we call dampness. This is very paradoxical because some people who have rapid transit 
have diarrhea or loose stools. But some people who are very constipated will also have irregular bowel movements, but when they have those bowel movements, they're often soft or sticky or wet. For these kinds of people, they typically eat a healthier diet, but they're eating lots of foods that generate what Chinese medicine calls dampness. It's recognizable because the difference between a hard dry bowel movement and a soft wet one or diarrhea, dry and moist, right? It's the water content. On the dampness side, typically these people eat too many smoothies, too many raw vegetables. They may be raw vegans. They may be drinking too many liquid drinks in general, green juices, smoothies, that sort of thing. And in general, what they need to be consuming is more cooked foods, cooked vegetables instead of raw vegetables, no smoothies, no protein powders, that sort of thing. These three are the most common constipation patterns that I see. Let's discuss more about where they come from, from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view, and what formulas we utilize to treat them. But first, I promise to talk about some of the nutrients linked to constipation. So I want to direct you to one research paper here. This research paper is called The Association Between Dietary Factors and constipation in adults living in Luxembourg and taking part in this survey. Now in this particular study, they found that there is a positive association, meaning an increased chance or frequency of constipation with people who had a higher total energy intake, calories, as well as sodium intake. There is a negative correlation, meaning less constipation, for people who had a higher fat intake. Now, there's something else here that is very important and very useful. At the end, researchers said, we found that grains, fat-rich foods, total fats, and starches were associated with a lower constipation score, while sugary products, sodium, and higher energy intake or calories were correlated with higher constipation score. This is interesting because in some ways it's very obvious and in other ways not so obvious. But fats generally can have a lubricating effect on the intestines and sugars and salts can have the opposite effect. So something that's worth keeping in mind here in terms of overall dietary intake when we're talking about nutrients that improve it or nutrients that worsen it. But what about from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view? Now, when we talk about what we call the qi stagnation constipation, what's very important is that this kind of irregularity is strongly correlated with emotions and stress. One kind of qi stagnation is emotional stagnation. Any high amount of stress, anything that causes resistance, I don't wanna to go to work, I hate this, I don't wanna do this, anything that produces physical resistance, or let's say nervous system resistance, produces blockages somewhere in the body and strong enough emotions influence physiology that have downstream effects. That is the most non-mystical way I can describe qi and how the disruption of qi flow causes disease. That is a very material, functional, physiological way of looking at it. For example, it's well known, even with women, qi stagnation is a major cause of menstrual irregularities. But what does that mean? Many women know from experience high stress periods can cause them to miss a cycle or to have a really painful menstrual cycle. What is happening there, right? Ancient doctors called that qi stagnation. Emotional factors can lead to physical, physiological changes. But for the qi stagnation kind of constipation, it's based a lot on regularity. Number one, stress pressure deadlines. Number two, typically irregular eating, right? Not eating breakfast, having a huge lunch. Small dinner, next day, huge breakfast. These kinds of irregularities with diet and eating often will produce this kind of qi stagnation constipation. Sometimes people like this are eating big meals because they're fasting and they're actually just putting a huge amount of food in their body to digest at once. But on top of that, there's often rushing and not taking time for proper meals. This is a big cause of qi stagnation kind of constipation. And in general, there's a general just anxious or rushed temperament. The number one formula I end up using for this is something called banxia xiaxintang. This formula is high in herbs that are very bitter. These bitters have a downward descending effect and a gastric regulating effect. Now the dryness, the heat kind of constipation, the number one correlation I see with this is just very poor diet and not drinking a lot of water. So typically when people come in, they have the heat kind of constipation where there's an average of once every three days or more. Typically there's just not a lot of consciousness day to day about their diet. So in the morning they're eating breakfast sandwiches, they're having their extra large latte or frappuccino, lunch is whatever the office is eating, maybe there's a donut or a sugary snack in the afternoon or a second coffee, and dinner is just basically they may go out to an Italian restaurant for business, they're getting a pasta dish and two glasses of wine. Now there's nothing wrong with those on an individual basis, but the cumulative effect of just sort of always eating what tastes good, it's high calorie, it's high sodium like we just talked about, and maybe even high sugar. So these people have a lot of interior dryness and inflammation often in the intestines and digestive system. They almost always will also have acid reflux or indigestion and tend towards high blood pressure. For these type, I typically use either the first formula, Ban Chia Shishin Tang, if there's upper GI issues, or if it's purely lower GI, bloating irregularity, I'd use Si Ni San, 
So frozen extremities powder, it's called. This is high in herbs like jushur, immature orange peel, and baishao, peony, which are very, very good for the peristalsis. And they're very good for also blood sugar regulation. Now the third constipation pattern, the dampness one, where people typically when they come in to see me, they often eat a healthy diet or they're orthorexic, right? They're eating like only raw vegetables and raw smoothies and smoothies and green juices. And it's too much raw and cold from a Chinese medicine point of view. These people are often benefited from having more cooked foods, no smoothies, no green juices, that kind of thing. In general, a formula that works really well is called Li Zhong Wan, regulate the middle pill. This formula is very good for what we call interior cold. So the dampness is as a result of all the raw vegetables, all the smoothies, the liquids, the cold iced smoothies, green juices. Sometimes they're literally cold and sometimes they're what Chinese medicine would call the qi is cold. Lemon juice you want to drink in the summer, right? You don't want to drink ginger juice when it's 90 degrees out and humid. That's the qi quality, the temperature quality. So for these kinds of people, this formula will often firm up those stools quite a lot. So three general kinds of constipation, nutrients that are related to it. Again, if you guys want to work with me one-to-one -one in my private practice, I work with a very limited number of new patients every month in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. There's info right below this video, or you can just go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic to call or email us. And besides that, don't forget, I've also put together that free quiz here to discover the root cause of where a lot of your symptoms are coming from. And I have another related video on some of the other causes of constipation and health issues right up here.